Welcome everybody to noon prayer and communion here in the upper room. Uh, glad that you're here with us in person and online. We're going to spend about 30 minutes together in prayer and scripture and communion. So if you are with us online, make sure you have gathered some communion elements. And here in the upper room, we'll be using the little communion packets that are in the basket uh, at that back table. So make sure you have that prepared. Um, so as we have prayed the prayers that will then lead us uh, to the table of the Lord. Our psalm for today, that's where we're going to get started. Our psalm for today is Psalm 127. We are in this section of the psalms known as the Songs of Ascents. This is a collection of prayers and songs that were prayed by the ancient people of God when they would travel up to Jerusalem uh, for festival time. And they're normally a little bit shorter. Today's psalm is only about six verses. And I will offer it uh, as prayer, um, but you'll notice the, the, the voice here in the psalm. It's really directed to us. Uh, it's one of those teaching psalms that they call a didactic psalm. And our tradition here at Word of Life is we just, we use the psalms as a prayer book, as the language of prayer. And so we give voice to it in the presence of God. Uh, even these psalms that are actually sort of directed towards us. Um, it opens with the very famous line, unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who build it. And of course, this is a, uh, a line from the Psalms that we take uh, to think about metaphorically. We think about the church. We have some pastors with us that are praying. John's good to see you. Uh, John Garlock spoke at our uh, youth camp this summer, and uh, I heard he did a great job. Actually, my 14-year-old came back and said, you are now his favorite preacher, so you, you stole that from me. But that's okay. It's good. Uh, glad that you're here. Uh, but often, with, for those of us who are pastors, you know, we, we think of the church as the household of faith, the household of God. And uh, this is a house uh, that God is building. So those of us who are pastors, uh, we're simply shepherds working with the great shepherd who is King Jesus. And Jesus is building his church. And so uh, those of us in church leadership, our responsibility is to try to keep up with Jesus. Um, and to partner with what Jesus is doing. And uh, this psalm also uh, speaks of children as both a heritage and a blessing. And so we'll, we'll pray when we get to that time um, in our uh, noon prayer service here. We'll pray uh, for, our, for our children, uh, in particular the, the kids, the students here at Word of Life. You know, my, my heart has been drawn towards that uh, since I was at youth camp summer before last and got to spend a whole week with some of our students and to recognize that God is at work. And it's also becoming a grandfather. Uh, my uh, grandson is now uh, more than a year old. And so now having a grandchild and still raising kids, um, I sense that responsibility uh, to pass on the faith to the next generation. And uh, so I want to pray uh, for our kids. I um, also want to pray uh, when we get to the prayer request section uh, for parents with young children, because I know the challenges of, of raising kids. And uh, I think these days raising kids is even more challenging. And so parents need our help. They need our, our love and our support and our prayers. And they need the reminder that children are a heritage. They are a gift. You know, when you're raising little kids, you got to remind yourself some days, they are a gift, they are a gift, they are, you just got to repeat that, make that a mantra, because uh, there's some days I know parents feel like they're at the end of their rope. And uh, so uh, this psalm is, has those themes that have just been very dear to my heart. So let me offer Psalm 127 as a prayer, and then we'll pray uh, for some of the needs that we have. But first, let's open with Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, in vain the watchman keeps his vigil. It is in vain that you rise so early and go to bed so late. Vain, too, to eat the bread of toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. 
Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb a gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he contends with his enemies in the gate. Lord, we want to allow Psalm 127 to guide us as we pray today. Praying, Lord, that you would continue to build your church. Lord, you're building households, you're building families. We give you thanks for that. But we also believe that you're, you're building churches, uh, not just Word of Life Church, but other churches in this area, in our region. Lord, you're at work. And so we ask, Lord, that you would continue that good work. Lord, we don't want our labor to be in vain, so we, we yield our attention to you. Help us, Lord, to pay attention to what you're doing in and among us as you continue to build your church. Jesus, you said that you're building your church and that the gates of hell will not prevail. And Lord, these are difficult days for the church in North America, so would you continue to cleanse and defend your church and build your church and strengthen your church and purify your church and help us, Lord, to, to stay close to you. And Lord, this psalm also speaks of the blessing of children. And so we do bless the children that are in our church and in our community. And so we want to pray, Lord, for those that, uh, that work with children. We want to pray for parents. But I'm also thinking today of, of teachers, um, those that are educators in our public school system, in our various private schools, and for educators who are teaching their kids at home. Lord, I pray for each one who has this call to teach teach, that you would help them, that you would nourish them, that you would empower them. Lord, as they are uh, teaching a new generation, Lord, may they have grace every day. Um, help them, Lord, not just to pass on information, uh, but to nurture the hearts and the minds of, of young kids. Lord, we pray that you would continue to uh, protect children in our community and, and help us here at Word of Life Church to pass on the faith to the next generation. We do believe, Lord, that you are at work on Sunday morning in kids camp and 678 and on Wednesday nights in our MYC student ministry. So we pray, Lord, that you would continue uh, to pour out your spirit upon these young people, Lord, that they would uh, first feel a sense of uh, safety and security in your presence. Lord, there's a lot in our world uh, that make kids fearful. Lord, technology has allowed uh, children and uh, teenagers to be very aware of the fallenness of our world. So we pray, Lord, uh, first for their protection and that, Lord, they would find a sense of, of security in you. Lord, we pray that kids and students would find you to be that strong tower that they run to and are safe. Lord, may they come to know who you have created them to be, and Lord, cultivate them uh, in faith and hope and love, that they would love you with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and Lord, that they would uh, love one another. Jesus, you taught us these things that all people would know we are your disciples if we love one another. And Lord, in our angry and bitterly divided age and culture, what we need is a fresh baptism in your love. So Lord, let that be known among our teenagers and children that Lord, they would know that they are loved, that they are valuable, and that their hearts would be drawn to the God who is love. Lord, continue that good work. We pray even tonight as our students are meeting for, for worship, we pray that they would be encouraged and nurtured and that they would press on in following you with all of their hearts. And we pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. A number of prayer requests that have come in. Um, as you know, some of the things we pray about uh, are, are public, some are more private, uh, but we want to be faithful to lift up all those prayer requests. Uh, going to continue to pray for Cole Lindsay Novak. Um, as you know by now, Cole uh, is coming to be our next worship pastor, and uh, the prayer request right now is that they can find a house. And uh, I think Cole, he's going to be here this weekend uh, with one of his sons. 
sons. They got five boys, so they need prayer. Talking about praying for young parents. They got five boys, um, so they need our prayers. But Cole's going to be here this weekend uh, with one of his sons. They're going to be house hunting, and he's going to be leading worship on Sunday. I'm excited for that. But we want to pray for them in their transition. They're moving from Texas here. Uh, they should be with us permanently next month, but they need a house. And uh, so I want to, in particular, pray with, with faith believing that God opens that door. Um, because, you know, if it's just one guy looking for a place to stay, that's easy. But a family of seven, um, that can be challenging. And so we believe that God will provide. Do you believe that? I believe that. I think God will provide for them. Um, but I want to take that request to the Lord. And then also pray for those um, that are recovering from uh, surgeries or those that are in need of healing. Let's pray for them. Lord, we thank you for Cole and Lindsay and their children. We thank you, Lord, that you've called them uh, to come be a part of our church. And we're excited to welcome them into our church family. We're looking forward to Cole being here Sunday to lead us in worship. And we do pray, Lord, that you show yourself strong on their behalf and uh, lead them to the right house. Lord, you have provided for us. We each have that testimony that we were in desperate situations. Uh, maybe it was looking for a place to live. Maybe it was something else. And Lord, we cried out to you for help and you answered us. Lord, when we moved back to St. Joe 12 years ago, we were praying similar prayers and, and you provided a house for us. So Lord, as you have been faithful, would you show yourself faithful uh, to the Novak family? Provide them with a house. Lord, help them, both mom and dad and all these kiddos to, to make the transition from one city to another. And uh, we pray pray, Lord, that you would help them with all the details, finding a house and all the other packing and moving details, uh, that, Lord, you would protect them, Lord, as they're traveling, and that it would be a wonderful experience for their family. Transitions are always hard, Lord. We know that. So we pray that you would be with the Novak family in this transition and do provide a house for them. And Lord, there's a number of uh, church members that we know of who are recovering from various um, surgeries or procedures. We're praying specifically for a church member who just yesterday uh, had an eye surgery. We pray that she would recover uh, quickly, that she would recover well, that you would be her strength. Lord, another church member um, has, has privately moved into hospice care, and Lord, she's coming to the end. And so we pray, Lord, for her, for her family, that they would turn their full attention towards you, that, Lord, you would bless them with grace and peace in this time of transition for them. And then, Lord, we continue to pray in faith for all of those who are uh, fighting a battle against cancer. We pray for their healing, for their wholeness. And while they're going through treatments or wrapping up a round of treatment, that you would strengthen their bodies, but also strengthen their hearts, their minds, Lord, that they would hold on to hope. Lord, show yourself as a healer for those. And Lord, for Word of Life Church, for both our in-person and online congregation, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would be our shepherd, be our guide, direct us, pour out your spirit upon us, that we might be an authentic expression of the kingdom of Jesus here in Northwest Missouri and around the world. Help us, Lord, to represent you well, that we as a congregation wouldn't live for our own renown or fame but that we would work and worship together to make Jesus famous. Lord, help us to do that. Empower us to do that. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Our gospel reading is in Matthew 21. And here Jesus has entered into the holy city of Jerusalem and of course, you know, the, the crowds welcome Jesus in with great fanfare. We celebrate that on Palm Sunday. Jesus enters into Jerusalem and they wave their palm branches and they're throwing their clothes out to make a red carpet entry for Jesus who enters in on a donkey and they're shouting, Hosanna, God save, God come to rescue. 
because Jesus for three years had a traveling ministry where he was proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and, and doing all these great miracles. And so word was spreading. Even without digital technology, without social media or texting, word began to spread. So when Jesus enters into the holy city of Jerusalem, this is, this is the son of David. This is the king who is to come. Because their expectation in the first century Jewish world was for the king, the Christ, the Messiah to come. And so the rumors on the street was that this uh, Galilean prophet, Jesus of Nazareth, that he just might be the one. So Jesus enters the city with great fanfare, but then come the religious leaders. And what we're going to hear in our gospel reading is that when they uh, approach Jesus, when he enters Jerusalem, they want to challenge his authority. Like, uh, you know, where, where, where have you come from, right? Who, who's the one that has authorized you to speak on God's behalf and to do all these great things? And so we'll, we'll see how their dialogue goes um, in just a moment. And then after that, Jesus uh, tells them a parable. And remember that the parables, the stories of Jesus, were not illustrations to make a point. Uh, they weren't given by Jesus to make things more clear. They were actually complex little stories that Jesus would tell in order to challenge people. And uh, here he's going to uh, challenge the chief priests uh, and the elders uh, because one of the problems that they had with Jesus is that he was known to associate with sinners. Uh, he had this reputation for preaching, for teaching, for doing miracles. He also had a reputation for hanging out on the wrong side of the tracks, hanging out with the wrong people. That Jesus had this radical inclusion where he would even enter the home and dine with well-known notorious sinners. And this, of course, for the Pharisees in particular, uh, upset the apple cart. Because the Pharisees believed for the Messiah to come, for, for God to show back up, that they needed a, a reformation of purity. And by purity, that means you got to get rid of all those sinners, only, only pure people, only those who are morally pure. But Jesus seemed to welcome and associate with people who were not known for moral purity. And so this threw some of the Pharisees uh, into a bit of confusion, and thus they, they challenged Jesus. So we'll listen to the gospel reading here in a moment, and you'll, you'll see the inner, inner uh, change here, the exchange between Jesus and these religious leaders. But then listen carefully to the story, to the parable. That Jesus tells because I think Jesus is not only speaking to these religious leaders but he's speaking to all of us who have a little Pharisee in their heart now I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands who has a little Pharisee living in their heart but I'll freely admit that I got one um, now as I've grown in Christ I think I've diminished the voice of that little Pharisee but I, I, it's still it's still there. It, I, I hasn't been expelled altogether uh, because I can easily get critical and judgmental um, if I give that little Pharisee too much attention. So I think Jesus is speaking to all of those um, that have that sort of Pharisaical judgmental sort of spirit. Okay, so with that introduction, let me read. This will be from Matthew 21, starting in verse 23. Uh, I'll read um, uh, this gospel reading, and then I'll pray in response to it. And then we will prepare ourselves for communion. But first, a reading from the gospel of Matthew. When Jesus returned to the temple and began teaching... The leading priests and elders came up to him, and they demanded, By what authority are you doing all these things? Who gave you the right? I'll tell you by what authority I do these things, if you answer one question, Jesus replied. 
Did John's authority to baptize come from heaven, or was it merely human? They talked it over among themselves. If we say it was from heaven, he will ask us why we didn't believe John. But if we say it was merely human, we'll be mobbed because the people believe John was a prophet. So they finally replied, we don't know. And Jesus responded, then I won't tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think about this? Jesus said, a man with two sons told the older boy, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. The son answered, no, I won't go, but later changed his mind and went away. Then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will, but he didn't go. Which of these two obeyed his father? They replied, the first. Then Jesus explained his meaning. I tell you the truth. Corrupt tax collectors and prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God before you do. For John the Baptist came and showed you the way to live, but you didn't believe him while tax collectors and prostitutes did. And ever when you saw this happening, you refused to believe him and repent of your sins. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, when you show up to speak, often, Lord, you have the word of peace. You have the word of encouragement. But often, Lord, when you show up because you are a prophet, you have the word of challenge. And so, Lord, we hear you challenging these chief priests, these elders, these Pharisees from the first century. But, Lord Jesus, we believe that your words are living and they're active. And so, Lord, we hear them today as a challenge for us. And so, Lord, we, we want to sit with your word we want your words to do their work on our heart to soften us because, Lord, we freely admit that there are times that we get critical, that we get judgmental, that we quickly want to point out who is allowed in your kingdom and who isn't, who should be welcomed and who should be shunned. And, Lord, often our reasons for, for shunning uh, are, are made before we know the full story. Lord, we are the kind of people that are quick to react based on initial uh, impressions. And Lord, I confess this as a sin to you. I do that. Lord, I quickly size people up and I categorize them and I am judgmental. And for that, Lord, I feel ashamed and so I confess that, Lord, to you as a sin. And I, I confess it on behalf, Lord, of a people that are so reactive and so exclusive. Lord Jesus, we want to be your followers and we want to walk in your ways. And we believe that you are the God who uh, demonstrates for us the way to live, and that is the way of, of mercy, and that is the way of humility, and that is the way of compassion. And so, Lord, we want to be those kind of people, known not for who we exclude, but who we welcome and who we love. So, Jesus, would you, would you help us to walk down that path of humility? Would you help us to lay down our reactive, judgmental tendencies that we might be faithful disciples, that we might faithfully reflect your goodness and your love into the world? Lord, we need you to help us with this. If we're going to grow past this, we, we need your help. And so we call upon the help of heaven to Today. Lord, would you come and uh, baptize us afresh and anew in mercy and compassion. Let us be known, Lord, as the people of mercy. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Before I 
um, lead us in communion. Let me uh, lead us in the prayer for the week. Because that's where my mind was going after reading uh, the gospel reading. Because the prayer for the week opens, Oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. You know, there, there are certain Christian traditions that talk about the power of God. And uh, the prayer for the week here reminds us that the power of God is most often seen in mercy and pity. Let me offer this prayer and then we'll prepare ourselves for communion. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen and amen. We'll prepare ourselves now for communion. Again, if you are online with us, make sure you have some communion elements. And here in the upper room, make sure you have a little communion packet. We will, as is our tradition, uh, both confess our Christian faith. We'll do that using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And then we'll pray a prayer of confession together. And one of the beautiful experiences of Holy Communion is that opportunity to once again receive the Lord's mercy. I've shared this a time or two, uh, but John Wesley had a sermon entitled The Duty of Constant Communion. And in that, John Wesley encouraged Christians to receive communion as often as they could. And way back in the 18th century, just like today, uh, people are saying, should you really do that? Should you, shouldn't you just wait and just take communion once a year, twice a year, make it really, really special? And Wesley answers in his sermon a lot of the questions. And one of his responses is that Holy Communion is the offer from God of mercy. And so Wesley says, why would you not receive the gift of mercy as often as you can? And that resonates with me uh, because some days I'm the prodigal son coming and run into the father's house, right? And then some days I'm the older brother <laughs> with that little Pharisee in my heart, not willing to come into the party. And so I am one who needs the mercy of God regularly. And so this is the offer of mercy. Jesus offers his body and his blood that we might have this experience of mercy. And the more I think we experience intentionally the mercy of God, the more merciful we become. So let's uh, confess our Christian faith and confess our sin and then come to the table. First, let's confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let's confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And God is gracious to all who confess their sins and in humility ask for mercy. In the name of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. Jesus says, whoever 
eats this bread that I offer. He said, this, this bread, this is my, my flesh that I give for the sake of the world. That whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup eats and drinks to eternal life. So as we come now to Holy Communion, we come saying the cup of blessing that we bless. This is our participation in the blood of Jesus. And this bread which we break, this is our participation in the body of Jesus, the body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. As we prepare now to head back into our day, uh, join me and let's pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Let me send you now back into your day with this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace.